I said a long time ago I still had some reviews I had promised some filmmakers I was going to do. Unfortunately, as is an issue when you're a one-man team, time got away from me. Anyway, here's one of those movies I've been meaning to review since last year. I received a message from the people behind a film called Girls, Guns, and Blood. My first impression was that seeing actresses like Rebecca Love and Muffin Baker, that this was going to be an action-y version of their many late-night Cinemax-type films. Something like Bikini Royale, or Bikini Girls from the Lost Planet, or Super Ninja Bikini Babes, yeah, you get the point. Anyway, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting much, and I was kinda right. Not saying it was bad, I would put it at just a solid okay. It did surprise me with some things, but I'll get into that in a minute. The movie's about a brothel that gets robbed. The girls that work there had been saving up so they could quit the business, and these scumbags come along and take all their retirement money. So the girls take matters into their own hands and hunt down the bad guys to get revenge. It has a very grindhouse exploitation foundation, but with it being shot on digital with CG blood splatter, it reminds you that this is a movie from 2019. I also kept forgetting the name and calling it something more along the lines of Blood, Boobs, and Bullets, which fits the film about the same, really. It has a few twists in it that I really wasn't expecting from a film like this. It did show they were at least trying to make something that was more than the title would suggest. I also was surprised at the lack of nudity. These kind of films are usually loaded with skin, which is a major selling point. And while this did have its fair share, it was nowhere near something like the Big Bus Theory. Yeah, that exists. The cast was mostly porn stars or softcore porn stars, so the acting was okay. Not the best, but not the room. Which could be good or bad depending on how you look at it. It did drag at points, which is not so great when your film only runs about an hour and 15 minutes. It may have worked better as a 30 minute short, or perhaps if it was done like a Tales from the Crypt episode. Just cut the fat and get right to the meat. Brothel robbed, girls get revenge, twist ending. There's also some comedy thrown in which was welcome and showed they weren't trying to go all super serious with this. Although I don't know, I think if they went either brutally serious or straight up parody, it may have worked better than trying to sit in the middle. Girls, Guns, and Blood is an okay film. Nothing that you need to rush out and see, but not as bad as you think. I know that's not a rousing endorsement. The action's mediocre, but the story was, as I said, better than expected. It's a film that does suffer from being made now. If this was made back in the 70s or 80s, it probably would be considered a classic. Look at something like I Spit on Your Grave or Thriller, which kind of have a similar revenge angle, but are infinitely better. Never discount how much something shot on film with practical effects can improve a movie. I know there's more to it, but I'm just pointing out the basics. I will say this, and I hope it gives the filmmaker some consolation. It was better than Slender Man, and that probably cost at least 10 times more than this did.